Okay, so we're now ready to start the actual welding process. So let's have a look at some other things as well. Now, the guys I served my time with many years ago never ever bought welding rods. They make their own. The rod is cut from the same metal that we are using. If you buy aluminium TIG rods, they're slightly different and do not perform the same way. So I just quite simply cut a strip off the parent metal, which means you, you never run out of welding rods for aluminium. You just cut them off the sheet. Okay, I have two prepared here. The next thing, aluminium welding flux. This is made by a company called SWP. There's quite a few people uh, still in the business of making aluminium powdered flux, but it's difficult to get hold of. It is for sale on eBay. Uh, I've tried this and it's absolutely superb, so I'm going to stay loyal to SWP and their product. It works perfectly every time. Tried some of those recently, it's not so good. Let's have a look inside this. It's got another lid. The, why would it have another lid? And that's it, the reason being that aluminium welding flux is hygroscopic and it, abs it absorbs moisture from the atmosphere if left exposed. So it's very important that we don't leave the lid on, uh, li lid off, sorry, and walk away. Okay, look at that, it's even twisted inside a bag. It's got three barrier methods to stop moisture getting in and contaminating the powder. Okay, so it's open now and it's ready for use. Another additional thing, another additional trick, is to mix some of the powder with a small amount of water to make a paste. When it's newly made up, it works perfectly. Once again, if it's left for any a period of time, it doesn't work. So we're using like a uh, like an artist paintbrush or something like that. As I explained before, we've already filed it and wire brushed it. I'm now we're going to paint some flux on. We don't need a huge amount, but you need to be thorough that it's coated the edges. Okay. So that just helps the process. So we've made a paste from the flux with a small amount of water and we've applied that now. Another key part, I'm actually using a visor here, but you can use conventional welding goggles. But the key part that you need is uh, a visor that will, or, or lenses on your goggles that will reduce the glare from the flux. When you are brazing and using a powdered flux, it, it glows very, very bright orange, orange yellow colour. And you cannot see the weld pool for that. So they're all graded. And normally I'll say GW. For gas welding, GW3, GW4, the higher the number, the darker the shade. Uh, but they need to say GWF, F for flux. The, the F part filters out the glare. If not, you cannot see the molten pool and you probably have problems of it melting through. And people say, no, it just melts away and you can't really see what's going on. Maybe they're using the wrong uh, visor or goggles. Okay. Additionally, nozzle size. I'm using a number five. A five is quite a, a large aperture. The reason being that it, it's a, a large aperture. Aluminium dissipates heat very, very well. We need it to come up to temperature quite quickly. If you used a number one or a two, you'd have a bit of a wait. So we need to speed the process up. Okay, so we're now going to uh, we're going to tack it. That's the key part. We're not ready to actually weld it all together yet. We're going to tack it. So here we go. Aluminium, as I said, does take a while to come up to temperature, but be patient, it does melt. And it's just coming up to temperature now. Introduce the rod. There we go. There's the first tack. Okay. It's expanded and moved around a little bit. 
I'm going to continue to uh, tack it up. Actually raise the temperature, it's quite fierce now. But that's to speed up the tacking process. It's a bit too fierce, I've just reduced the temperature slightly. I've warmed the rod and dipped the rod in the powder. It, the flux then sticks to the rod. Okay, that's the basic tack tacking up process. There's a little bit of uh, problems, a little bit of overlap there. But we will. Uh, what I'll do is I'll let that cool for a moment, and then with a hammer and a dolly or on a stake, I will just level the surfaces up. If I'm happy with it and everything's okay, we will then continuously weld it. What we'll do is, in, it is possible to actually run aluminium together, people believe it's not, but it is. If everything is prepared properly, it will just fuse together exactly the same way that steel does. But what I want to do is I want to add plenty of filler rod. In fact, I'm going to over rod it. And that, that means I'm going to add more material than is actually required. The reason being, once it's all washed off, planished and rewheeled, we're hoping to get an invisible weld. No real evidence that it's been joined together. Okay, so I will, uh, I will now uh, level that up.